this subject is a close one to my heart one because it's a condition that is prevalent among black adults and it's one that has cost me and my family a very close relative well. Welcome back to my channel Food Decoded where I help you reset your relationship with food. My name is Yemi Fadipe and I'm your host. Today's video is about a subject matter that is very close to my heart and I'm not just playing with words. I know that the title of this video is Matters of the Heart but this subject is a close one to my heart. One because it's a condition that is prevalent among black adults and it's one that has cost me and my family a very close relative and when i say very close relative it's not just any relative it's something that cost the life of my own mom and this is the subject of high blood pressure and heart conditions high blood pressure and heart conditions has more or less become like one of the id cards for black adults everywhere you look at for risk factors when they're listing salt cholesterol and all the other risk factors there is one risk factor that they always include and it's being black like being black puts you at risk of high blood pressure and heart condition. And that just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because up until now, and I say that carefully, choosing my words carefully, up until now, no science or research has linked the risk of high blood pressure or heart condition in black people to our genetic composition. Of course, there is the aspect of family history, but generally, there is no research that establishes the fact that being a black person means you have to be exposed to high blood pressure and heart condition. What signs are pointing to is lifestyle, social behavior, social attitudes actually is what makes us more exposed most of the time to high blood pressure and heart conditions. My own mom was diagnosed with high blood pressure and a heart condition in her late 30s. She is a medical professional and she did everything possible to manage her health, to stay alive, but we lost her sadly 10 years later in her late 40s. Now when I look back and from what I've gathered over time from my professional knowledge, from research, from studying, from actually taking interest in these subjects, I've actually identified that a lot of the things that exposes us as black people is lifestyle and our choices, much more than our genetic composition. At least for now, science has not proven that. So, I know you're looking at me and thinking, what is Yemi saying today? Oh, okay. How is it everything that we eat? Oh, but whites also eat unhealthy food, high fat, and they also have heart conditions. Yes, white people have heart conditions. Heart conditions and high blood pressure is prevalent around the world in adults, but the statistics always tell us anywhere you go in the world, black communities have higher stats of high blood pressure than any other ethnic group. Now, I want to talk us through the risk factors of high blood pressure and heart condition. I'm going to talk through about 10, just 10. And when I go through this thing, you would see, if you are honest with yourself and making an honest assessment of this, that what exposes us as black people is mostly lifestyle than genetic composition. One of the first risk factors for high blood pressure is too much salt in the diet. And we know that our food as black people is a lot of salt. I was a massive salt eater. Too much cholesterol, high cholesterol, high saturated fat and trans fat, and we cook in a lot of oil. Vitamin D deficiency is a risk factor. I actually have another video where I explain why so much false about vitamin D for black people. So you might want to check that out and see why vitamin D can be an issue for black people. There's family history that you don't have control over. You don't choose your family. You just born into a family and if there's an issue of high blood pressure and heart condition yet that can expose you, you can't do anything about that. Lack of physical activity exposes you. Being overweight and obese is one of the major risk factors and we know that a lot of us are overweight and obese within the black community. Actually, 7 out of 10 black adults are either overweight or obese. Another factor that could expose you to high blood pressure would be too little potassium in the diet and that comes from a wide variety of fruits and vegetables and a wide variety of legumes and pulses. And we know that our diet, most black cultures, is carb heavy. Stress and mental health exposes you to high blood pressure. That one, we all know that. And if you look around the world, most black nations are developing nations that are already plagued with high corruption level, low standards of living, high level of insecurity. So everyday life is stress. And even when you decide to leave those countries to go into the Western country, you only just switch that stress to the stress of an immigrant, juggling three, four jobs, uh, subjects to uh, discrimination, subjects to bullying, and so many things. So 
The life of a typical black adult is relatively stressful than that of most other ethnic groups and stress is a key risk factor for high blood pressure and heart conditions. Too much alcohol and smoking. Although the records show that blacks do not smoke as much as other ethnic groups, but there is an increasing trend of alcohol use or misuse and over control of alcohol within black communities. And the tenth one I'm going to talk about today is air pollution. I'm sure a lot of you have never thought about that. Air pollution is also a risk factor. And please tell me, what black country in the world does not have air, air pollution? I come from Nigeria, where there is no power. Every house, every flat in a block of apartment has their own generator and the fumes are up every night. You know, when I lived in Nigeria, one of my days, and I always say that, God, I don't know what's going to happen 10 years time when all the health effects of all these fumes will start catching up with people within this community. So if you look at all these risk factors, there are about six of these risk factors that have to do with what we put in our mouth. Salt, potassium, fat, cholesterol, overweight, at least six things in these 10 risk factors that we can actually straight away manage and control. I know that air pollution, you might not have a control over it, you might not have families, but what we can control, do we actually control it? That makes me start to look at it. That, is it a case of us not being aware of the risk factors if you were not aware before i've just given you 10 risk factors now so i'm hoping that by the time you finish watching this video awareness is no longer a problem the other thing i'm thinking of is is it a case that we are aware but we just blatantly ignore the signs you know i've had people who say oh it's something that has to kill somebody anyway oh yes yeah, something is going to kill every one of us eventually but when do you want that something to kill you and what is that something that you really want to give your life Oh, is it really worth it? There are people who say, oh, I don't have high blood pressure, I don't have hypertension, I don't have heart condition, so please don't ask me to eat well, to do that, to exercise, I don't have any problem. Well, my question to you is, would you rather avoid that, prevent that now, or would you just carry on as you're going, knowing that it's a matter of time, it's just a ticking bomb, you will not get there if you don't make changes now. Or, you know, some of us will say, oh, how many years do I even want to live in this world that I cannot eat everything I want? <laughs> And when you say that, the thing that comes to my mind is, you know what? Would you rather eat well now when you have your freedom and you can exercise the freedom to eat what you want? Would you exercise your freedom in eating well or would you wait until food becomes a prescription for you? I remember that when my mom got diagnosed with heart condition, all of a sudden everything changed in our house. Meals changed. And then there were the most awkward things that people were recommending from left, right and center for her to eat to, to help her or to cure her heart condition. One of them was bitter leaf water. Oh my God, that was so bitter. She would wash bitter leaf and then that bitter green water she would drink. Point of people said, oh, the slime from snail cures high blood pressure. We have to start breeding snails and then she would turn the snail upside down, crack the head and do it on water and all the slime would drain and she would drink it. It became a matter of eating to stay alive. Why would you wait until food becomes that? Why would you wait to start eating Yo, yo, bitter, flat drinking slime. Why do you have to get to that point before you look after yourself? When you can actually eat well now, exercise your freedom to eat well now and prevent that. So that's another aspect I'm looking at. I think there's an attitude problem around it. There's also the culture of if you're not overweight, you're not well to do. I remember as a young woman when I was really slim and I always get comments like, how, how are you going to carry a pregnancy with you being this slim? I actually thought that being slim was a disease. Our attitude to it is actually one of those things that's exposing us. But we know that when you're overweight and obese, your risk of high blood pressure is higher because you're giving your heart more work to do. So we need to actually shift our attitude from curative to preventive. We need to not wait until we are diagnosed and then we start putting all sorts of rubbish in our mouth to preventive eating well now so that you don't have to eat based on prescription. So if it's not awareness, and if it's not just attitude, then what it is. The, the only other thing it can be is that we know what can expose us, we know what can be done, but we're just not doing it in action. I'm challenging you in today's video to take action to look after your heart. The good news is most of the risk factors to high blood pressure and heart condition are modifiable factors because you can control them. And the recommendation and the advice is always that what you have control over don't give it up for inaction. Act on those things that you can control. Eat well, eat a balanced diet, move and get physically active. Check your blood pressure. A lot of the high blood pressure deaths among black communities is uncontrolled and undiagnosed high blood pressure. A lot of us are walking around the streets not knowing 
that we are carrying this disease until when something happens and you hear the news of, oh, somebody was just sitting on the dining table and they put their head down and they're dead. Oh, he was in the exam hall and he put his head down and he was dead. Oh, he just fell down and he was dead. So it is important for us to check, check, check and check. It's easier these days to even check your blood pressure. You can do it on the smartwatch. You can buy your own blood pressure kit and you can always book appointments and have regular medical checkups, including a check of your blood pressure. Pressure. I'm doing this video today because this month would mark the 15th year's memorial of my mom. She passed away sadly from heart attack and that is why I'm discussing this. It's a matter that is close to my heart personally but it actually is something that I is close to my heart for the black community that we reject this ID card that being black exposes you to high blood pressure. Let's start to address our food Let's start to address our lifestyle and let's start to address our attitude, especially to weight and physical activity. For those of you who are ready to take action, watch out for my next video when we'll be talking more about eating for your arts. Until then, take care and keep looking after yourself.